Hi, this is Rich Rodriguez, head football coach at West Virginia University. I appreciate your attention and, and watching this tape. Our defensive coordinator, Jeff Castillo, who also coaches our linebackers, is going to talk to you about our unique odd stack defense. Uh, he'll give you the particulars on what we do on certain formations and what our philosophy is defensively behind the odd stack. Hi, I'm Jeff Castillo. I'm the uh, coach of the linebackers and defensive coordinator here at West Virginia University. And uh, take a couple minutes to uh, go over the, uh, our odd stack defensive package for you. I'll give you a little bit of background. Uh, we went down and uh, researched uh, the defense through Wake Forest University. Uh, Dean Hood and uh, Brad Lambert and those guys were gracious enough to open up their uh, program to us and, and it, uh, our kids took to it right off the bat. One of the things that we liked about the defense uh, starting out is it's a, it's a simple defense. Uh, our kids can play left and right. Uh, we don't flip-flop uh, personnel. We play left and right with our linebackers. We play left and right with our uh, ends. Uh, it allows them to play fast. They have to learn a couple concepts uh, within uh, the framework of uh, offensive formations and things of uh, that nature to give them a little bit of knowledge to uh, how we want them to play. But for the most part, uh, it's a simple defense that allows those guys to play fast uh, and be full speed athletes. And our guys uh, took to that right off the bat. They really enjoy that. Uh, the other thing that we really like about the defense is you get so many second level players uh, because you have three down guys and uh, really uh, five uh, second level defenders uh, that have the ability to, to get to the football, see the ball and get to the ball uh, is another concept that we really, really liked. And uh, it lets, again, it lets our guys be full speed athletes. Uh, we cut down on the, the number of big plays that uh, uh, happened to us the year before. We gave up uh, a ton of uh, big plays. We play well for four, five, six plays and then give up a big uh, run the season before in the eight man front. And uh, by having these second level players and having a, a middle of the field safety cut down dramatically on the, uh, uh, the big plays that we gave up. Uh, the kids uh, really, uh, really like that. The, the other thing is we're an eight-man front concepts out of an odd package. Uh, that was very similar to what we had done the, uh, the year before in terms of the eight-man front. But getting into the odd front poses some problems from uh, different blocking schemes. You can get uh, stem in and out of some different fronts in, this, uh, in the odd stack. Our personnel, we play with three down linemen. And we, again, we play left and right. We have what we call two ends and a, and, a, and a nose guard. Our best player up front, personnel wise, is our nose guard. He's got to demand double teams. Uh, he's got to be stout enough uh, to, uh, to, 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 to play head up on a center uh, and be a, a true uh, two gap player force. Uh, but he's got to be able to demand uh, double teams. As, as we got through the uh, uh, the year last year, people tried to start a single block in our nose a little bit, which gave us a little bit of trouble. This guy has got to be our best player up front, has got to be our nose guard. Uh, our defensive ends, again, are, we would like for those guys to be long, uh, rangy type guys. They don't necessarily have to be uh, the, the true five technique, the big, uh, strong physical guy, although we would like to get them as, as big, as strong, as physical as we possibly can. But in this defense, because you have the second level defenders who can uh, penetrate for you, you need some guys that, that, that have the ability to, to build an edge force and uh, have the ability to, to be a contained rusher and being able to, to hold up on uh, a little bit of double team. You, they don't get a, a great deal of double team uh, because of the way we play our linebackers and our, uh, our outside backers, but they have to be able to, 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 be able to get, uh, in on, get their hands in on people and uh, defeat uh, reach blocks and cutoff blocks. But again, our best player up front is our nose guard. Uh, we want uh, rangy athletic kids as our, our five techniques. Primarily, we would like for them to be uh, anywhere in the 270 to 280 pound range and anywhere from 6'3 to 6'5 if, uh, if we could get those. Our nose guard again can be the, the, the squat guy. 
uh, anywhere from six foot six, six one, six two, and we prefer him to be a 290, 300 pound guy uh, that can that can move. But again, these guys just go left and right. We can flip them and put them to the tight end side. We could play them uh, field and boundary if we like to. But as uh, so far in the defense right now, the only thing we've done really is just played them left and right. Our linebackers is what we call a Lou, a Rob, and a Mike. And again, they also play uh, left and right. And again, our mic is right in the middle uh, of the defense. The best players, uh, our, our, our best athletes linebacker-wise are the, the Lou's and the Rob's. Those guys are uh, the guys who can run. Uh, again, uh, the more athletic uh, linebacker than, than the Mike. Uh, the Mike has to be more the, the tough guy. He's a downhill player. He's going to end up being a, uh, a guy who's going to have to get down there and, and beat on the guards a little bit. Uh, force uh, primarily with the the Lou's and the Rob's those guys are scrape guys we can keep those uh, they don't have to end up taking on fullbacks on the ISOs uh, but uh, that we have to have a true team player as the Mike linebacker he's got to be the most uh, physical and the toughest guy uh, in the uh, defense although last year we won nine games and, and uh, we're six and one in the Big East and our Mike linebacker last year was five foot ten 196 pounds tougher than heck uh, it was a walk on here Ended up earning a scholarship, but uh, the, the the starter here was five foot ten, about 196 pounds. Uh, he split time also. We got a, the the kid who's going to end up starting for us this year uh, is a uh, six three, about 240 pound uh, kid. Uh, but uh, the, our, our Mike linebacker was a, a, a tough guy who made a lot of plays for us last year. Uh, so size is, is not that important, although we would, again, like to have the biggest guy we can get in there. Our uh, Rob and our Lou linebacker, those guys were both all Big East players for us last year. Uh, the Lou linebacker is about six foot one. He's about 230 pounds. Uh, probably our best player. We put him on the left side because of most uh, teams' uh, ability to run to be right-handed uh, football teams. Uh, our Rob linebacker was probably the most athletic kid that we had. Uh, six foot two, about 235 pounds, and is a four five forty guy for us. So uh, again, uh, the most athletic guys here at the Lou and the Rob, and the Mike linebacker would be uh, uh, the, our tough guy that's going to play downhill and, and, and be a coach's guy for us. Uh, the uh, the next people we have is what we call our spur and bandit. Okay, our spur and bandit. Our spur is more of a, a an outside line or strong safety type guy. He can also be the fourth linebacker. Uh, he's more of a thug type player force. Uh, he's going to have to primarily take. Uh, uh, fullbacks and uh, guards on he's ended up playing a tight end every all of his uh, uh, meat will end up being uh, uh, he'll have to eat it uh, raw he's got to put his face on a fullback he's got to put his face on a tight end he's got to put his face on guards in the G scheme uh, as, a, as a cover guy for us he's going to end up being a, a, a flat defender and a, a curl defender for us the most part for the most part but he has to be the, the most physical and the toughest guy out of the, uh, uh, the Spurs and the Bandits. And again, we'll also use a fourth linebacker uh, there at that spot. The Bandit is primarily a, uh, a defensive back type guy. Uh, he had, we, we will back him up and play some quarter coverage with him. We also have to be a half player. Uh, again, the way we're going to play uh, most of the uh, run game with him to the, uh, to the open side is that uh, most of his, his uh, uh, run game is going to get skipped to him. Somebody's going to put a face on something and skip the ball uh, uh, out to him. So he gets all his, cook, all his meat cooked. The linebacker will end up putting his face on there and spitting the ball out to him. He has to be our best, uh, one of our best players, though, because he has so much on his resume. He's got to be tough enough to go in there and play the run game for us uh, and make plays on, uh, on people in the run game. And he's also got to be athletic enough to go back and be a, a quarters guy. And he also has to be an intelligent guy because he's also going to make some coverage checks for us. Uh, but uh, he's a very important part of our, our defense. Our corners, we do flop our corners. We play with a, a, a boundary corner, again, who's our most physical guy. We play our field corner, who is our most, uh, uh, our best cover guy. And we also have a free safety, who is a uh, you know, true uh, deep third middle free safety force. Uh, the thing that we've liked the most about the defense, again, is, is we played last year with uh, the Bandit and, and the Spur. Those guys were primarily defensive back type guys. 
So, uh, you know, we really played with three down linemen, three uh, linebackers, and, and, and primarily five defensive backs. Uh, but again, we can also uh, look at playing uh, more of a linebacker type guy over top of the, uh, the tight end. Um, that's primarily the, the way we do the, uh, the what, what we look at with our personnel wise. If we go base alignment, our ends again play left and right. They are ability alignment five technique guys, and by that we would we would like for those guys to play as tight as they can uh, on those uh, those tackles uh, and and be a crotch split guy. Uh, right now we're in the the point where we're playing. We've also we will also play them anywhere from crotch split to uh, inside foot, outside foot on those five techniques. Okay, but those those guys are ability alignment uh, players force. Five techniques. Uh, again, we don't flip them. Our nose guard is a true zero nose. He's head up on the center. Okay. Uh, our linebackers, or Lou and the Rob linebacker, line up right uh, in the middle of our five techniques. Our Mike lines up right in the middle of the nose guard. And our Rob, same thing with the five. Our spur. And Bandit, those guys are four and four players. The spur always aligns to the tight end side, uh, declares a tight end force and lines to that side. He is a four and four player off our defensive end. Okay, our Bandit aligns to the open side, away from the tight end or weak, and he is a four and four player off our defensive end. Our linebackers depth, two back depth uh, is four and a half to five yards. Uh, and again, we will shade those guys uh, depending upon the uh, formation. And our corners are one by eight players. Free safety is uh, 12 yards uh, at depth, splitting ones is our free safety's alignment. Okay. Uh, basic responsibility. We we. Every formation is broken down to a two by one formation. And anytime we have a two by one formation, we're going to gap align it. Okay? Basic responsibilities in a two by one, a pro formation, if we gap align, we are going to end up, the, like, li the Mike linebacker is going to give us a gap right call. And what that's going to happen, if that's the outside foot, or those are the feet of the nose, and the five techniques to the we're, we're going to slide to the two receiver side and we're going to put the rob the backer to the two receiver side on the outside foot of the five technique we're going to slide the mike linebacker over to the inside foot of the nose we're going to take the the backside backer to the single receiver side and work him off the inside foot of the five technique the band and the spur stay the same base gap responsibility in the defense the ends our C gap players to both sides. The nose guard, we're going to tell him to be a front side A gap player. The Mike linebacker is going to end up playing. Uh, also, I'm going to tell him also to play the front side A gap. Uh, it's the Mike linebacker's uh, responsibility to make the nose right. If the nose is behind, stay behind. If he's on the front side, stay on the front side, but the mic ends up playing over top of the nose. We're going to cancel the A-gap with the, the, the nose and the mic linebacker. These guys are going to cancel A-gaps for us. Okay? Our spur and bandit, the spur is a D-gap force player. The bandit is a, a, a bonus alley player to the weak side. Our linebackers, the Lou and the Rob linebacker, are, those guys are B-gap players. That's base gap responsibility alignment out of a pro set in the stack defense. We have a pro set. Again, a gap left call, three deep shell, banded away from the tight end, four and four player, B gap player, uh, Mike Backer, B split, A split Mike, C split uh, Lou Backer to the two receiver side, and we should be a four and four player here with our uh, spur. Aligned to the tight end side. And again, we would like for our mic to be a little wider than that right there. 
Uh, he should be really working off the inside foot. He's should be a little bit wider. Again, we're running the, uh, the backer through here. And again, a two by one alignment versus a twin set is again our banded alliance to the open side. He's going to go out and end up working uh, uh, off the inside uh, shoulder uh, or outside shoulder, depending on what kind of uh, coverage responsibility we're going to give him, whether we're going to end up uh, sitting a corner outside of him or giving him the flat. Uh, he's going to end up aligning at uh, anywhere from uh, five to seven yards off of two. Okay. Our, uh, Ends, nose, and uh, uh, our ends and nose don't change any at all. There's still five techniques. Head up. Okay, our spur again is to the tight end side. He's a four and four player off the uh, uh, the tight off, off the defensive end. And the Mike linebacker in this case would give us a gap left. They'll slide to the two receiver side. So our Mike will end up lining off the outside foot here of the nose. We will slide the loop backer again off the outside foot of this end. We will kick the, the weak side backer to the inside foot of this end. And our boundary corner will show off the tight end. Our free safety will still split ones. Gap responsibility, again, does not change uh, any at all. We're still a D-gap force player here. We're still a C-gap player uh, with our uh, five technique. We're still a B-gap player with uh, the, the Rob backer in this case. We're an A-gap player with either the mic or the nose. We're going to cancel both A-gaps with those two players. We're a C-gap player here, and we're a, a B-gap player here. We will play some uh, different coverage here, whether we're playing three deep or uh, quarter coverage, robber coverage uh, uh, versus twins to support the, uh, the run over here. Uh, and this guy ends up a, uh, an alley force player off however we're going to play the, uh, what, what coverage we're going to play over here. Okay, here we are in a, t in a twin set. Again, we'd be gapped right. Corner now is our overhang guy. Band is up as a 4-4 four four player. Our loop backers moving around. They're free to, to move around in the, uh, in the defense. Looks like we're running him through here in a, in a B-gap. Stein is our Rob backer and the mic. The bandit is misaligned here. He should be on the uh, inside shoulder out here at, uh, over top of two. Free safety again and three deep shell, splitting ones. Versus twins open. Again, our five techniques. Nothing changes up front for our Don guys. Okay, the two receiver side in this instance would be right. We'd get a gap right call from our Mike linebacker. So we're going to end up sliding to the right. Gap right. Now on the back side over here, our bandit is still a four and four player off the five technique over here. Okay, and to the back side for him, this is the back side of pro. Our Spur now has got two removed, so he's going to work five to seven off inside or outside shoulder, depending on the coverage alignment. Our free safety, again, is going to split ones, depending upon the coverage call, uh, how he's going to end up playing. But we will end up gapping right, and the same gap responsibility for the spur. It's basically twins. Uh, we're going to end up being a, a B-gap force guy, again, with the Rob Backer, C-gap, A-gap player off the, the nose and the mic. B gap player with the, the, the linebacker, the Lou backer, C gap player with the end, and again we got a bonus player uh, to the weak side of the defense. Anytime we get a two by one alignment or two by one formation, we're always going to gap a line. This is a two by one set, twins open. We should have a gap left call. This is a spur aligned to where we declare the tight end of the two receiver side. We're in our three deep shell. Safety splitting ones were one by eight with our corners. Got them tilted in. Two five techniques, zero. And uh, again, we should be in a gap left call. This is the Lou linebacker, the Mike, the Rob, and the Bandit. And we're kind of playing in with uh, paper alignment right now, uh, but we'll move our Bandits and Spurs in and out and uh, yo yo those guys in and out off of uh, slot receivers. 
again, you get a, an idea of where the linebackers are going to line. Again, we have a, a gap left call for the linebackers, two receiver side over here to the defense's left. And uh, there's our Lou Backer leveraging the football. Uh, Mike Backer uh, in an A-gap split. Right here's our overhang guy uh, with our bandit. Uh, he's a B-gap player, C-gap player. These two guys will cancel the A-gaps. A B-gap player here off of flow and a C-gap player and a bonus player on the back side. Versus a two tight, two back set. Again, left and right. We would declare the tight end uh, to the two receiver side, so our spur would end up aligning. And again, he's a four and four guy off our, uh, our five technique. Our bandit draws a tight end. He's a four and four player. Boundary corner off a, is a one by eight player off the tight end uh, to the weak side. A one by eight player again to the field. Free safety is going to end up splitting ones. And again, our backers uh, would cheat to the two receiver side with a gap right call in this case. And cancel gaps. So you get an idea of how simple it is, uh, at least for us to get lined up with our Lou, uh, Mike, and Rob, our ends playing uh, left and right. We, we, the only people we end up flopping is our bandit and our spur and our field corner and, uh, and boundary corners. Again, it lets our guys be uh, full speed athletes. They can get lined up easy. Uh, they enjoy being able to limit how much uh, uh, mental gymnastics they have to go through uh, just to get lined up. Uh, and lets them go be a full speed player. Here we are against a too tight pro set. Again, the, the front guys do not change a bit. Uh, should be a gap left, declare tight into the two receiver side. Four and four player, he could snug up a little bit uh, tighter to the nub side. Uh, anytime he doesn't have one outside of him, he can be a, basically a wide nine. And again, we're probably cheat a little bit over here to the two receiver side. He may be a little too tight in his alignment, a little too tight in alignment also. Corner needs to be a little bit tighter, but again, we're just canceling gaps. B gap player, A gap player, B gap player, force, force players. That is primarily how we line up against two by one formations. If we get any kind of two by two balance formations, we make a what we call a base call with the linebackers. Our ends, again, five techniques. Rob, Mike, and Lou versus balance two, two sets. They will make a, a base call, which tells them to stay right down the middle of their five techniques. And the nose guard, they're gonna stay right in the middle of those three down guys. We're gonna end up playing six people on five blockers. Our corner, our bandit, again, will go away from the tight call. We declare tight end I, to the right in this case, right here. Our spur's gonna go out and treat that just like they do twins. Our bandit's gonna end up uh, walking out and, and playing uh, uh, the inside receiver just like they do twins. We'll run a single safety defense, base out of a cover three or man free uh, concept and we end up canceling gap responsibility with, with these six guys. Again, we're straight C gap player here, B gap player, A gap player uh, with the nose and the mic, C gap player, a B gap player with our, with our Rob. Well, we, we will tighten our linebackers down a little bit versus one back. Uh, we'll tighten those guys down to uh, four to four and a half because of uh, uh, having to get down there to we see so much zone out of that uh, uh, look right there uh, but we are straight gap players in here we're now uh, a straight b gap player straight a gap player and a b gap player with our, our, our uh, linebackers we try to get those guys downhill uh, we like for them to play uh, gap responsibility from the outside in it allows those guys to be a little bit undersized uh, uh, and, and be more of a rip and run type uh, linebackers uh, especially versus the zone scheme and things like that. And like I mentioned before, our Mike linebacker was a 196-pound player for us last year. We won uh, nine games and we're in the top 30 in uh, run defense. Here's the doubles. 
Balance 2 2 set. Again, we're base. We will back our spurs and band us up five to seven yards off of doubles if we're going to play a, a three shell look. Just playing three deep, bringing a fourth rusher. It's the same thing versus a, a two by two. If we get two tight ends, base call for the linebackers, our bandit uh, and spur. Again, our four and four guys off our defensive ends, no different when a tight end shows for them. Uh, same thing with the bandit. Uh, our, our five techniques and those don't change any. Uh, and again, our linebackers will tighten up and be uh, play from uh, four to four and a half yards of uh, uh, depth right down the middle of our uh, 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 down alignment again. Gap responsibility, nose and the mic are going to cancel the A gap. We're going to end up being a B gap player with our outside backer, C gap player here, D gap force with our spur, C gap player, B gap player with the Lou, D gap player and run the safety in the uh, free safety in the alley. Here's a balanced 2-2 two, two set. Should be a base call with the linebackers. Put them right in the middle of the uh, zeros and the fives. Our bandit is into the boundary here. He's a 4-4 four four player off this tight end, a 4-4 four four player with our uh, spur up here. Corners are 1-8. by eight. Again, we're splitting ones with uh, the free safety here. Again, alignment is pretty good. I'd like for our, uh, this kid right here to be probably a little bit wider. Right down the middle of the five technique here. If we get any kind of uh, overload formation, a three by one set, we make a pool call and a pool alignment. What's going to happen here again, our down guys don't change any at all. Uh, what's going to happen, our spur is going to end up leveraging two like he normally would when two is loose. Okay, and, and he'll align uh, again anywhere from five to seven yards and shade according to whatever coverage we're going to end up having him in. Uh, our Rob linebacker now will also we'll get a pull call from the, the mic, and he's going to go out and leverage number three. And we would like for him to be uh, about a three by three, three yards outside of the tight end, and at least three to four yards of depth. He's going to end up replacing the, uh, the spur. We're going to pull our mic linebacker. He's going to line up over top of the guard. We're going to pull the backside uh, backer, in this case the Lou backer. He's going to line up over top of the, uh, uh, the weak side guard. And again, our bandit doesn't change anything. He's going to be in four and four player off of our end. Get our corner. Free safety again is splitting ones. And we play from there. The, the difference in the gap responsibility is now is he's not going to, the, the Rob backer is not going to be a D gap force, player force, still a C gap player with our end. We're going to be a B gap player with our Mike linebacker. We're going to be a, a step and stack player uh, with the Lou action away off the nose guard. He's going to end up making the nose guard right. We'll cancel both A gaps with those two guys and we'll end up being a B gap full player with our backside bandit in gap responsibility. Trips over here to the left. We have a pool call. It's a spur over top, number two, leveraging number two. The uh, Lou backer, leveraging number three. Uh, should be two or three yards outside of that tight end. Over top of the guards with our Mike and backside Rob backer. Here's the bandit. Again, the corners, free safety, nobody changes in a three show. Again, we're in a pool alignment. He needs to be a little tighter to the guard here. We're in pretty good shape. If we get too tight, again, we get a 3-1 set. we do the same thing. We end up using the boundary corner as a cutback player force. Mike Backer lines over top of the guard. Our Rob Backer, again, is a 3-3 three and three player off the, uh, the tight end, and we play from there. Again, a D-gap force guy, B-gap player, a step and stack guy, uh, player with our uh, Lou Backer in our nose, 
C gap, D gap force, and a cutback play with the backside corner. Free safety, again, splitting ones. So that's primarily uh, the way we would end up. If we, on any two by one formation, we have a gap alignment, two by two is a base alignment, and three by one is a pool alignment. Uh, and that's base uh, alignment and uh, gap responsibility uh, out of the stack defense. Here's an empty set. And again, the way we're going to end up playing empty, this kid needs to be a little bit more apexed over towards the, uh, the outside hip of this five technique to the field at about six to seven yards. But nothing really changes. We just treat it as a pull call with the trips and uh, just balance up on the backside out of an empty set. Okay, now we're going to bring in uh, Coach Bill Kerlavich, our defensive line coach. He's uh, a defensive line coach here at West Virginia for uh, a little over 23 years. He's just coming back onto the uh, field force. Uh, he's going to talk to you a little bit about our defensive line play and the odd stack defense. My name is Bill Kerlavich. I'm the defensive line coach for West Virginia University. I'm here to talk to you today about the, the defensive line and what we do with our defensive line in regards to the odd stack. The first thing I want to do is draw up basically where our guys are, are aligned. All right, and then I'll get into alignment versus technique. But with the odd, sta odd stack, we use the Oklahoma principle with three down linemen. All right, we'll have a nose guard and a track alignment on the center, and I'll get into his alignment in a little bit. Our two ends are our foot alignment, and by foot alignment, I mean their inside foot to outside foot alignment on the offensive tackles. All three are as tight, take as much of the line as they could get. They're as tight to the ball as we could get them. And, uh, their, their, their principal read, their principal key is, of course, the guy they're lined up on. Let me get into how they're coached. All three are predominantly coached the same way in regard to, in regard to the techniques that they're taught. And I'm going to show you that in a minute. What, what we do with these guys, and I, again, I have up here alignments versus techniques, okay? So as far as their, their alignments, we have two five techniques and one what we would refer to as a zero which would be our nose guard. As far as alignments goes, each one of these guys has three basic techniques off of each alignment. The first one, and I'll use, I'll use the guard here, the first one would be, uh, we would call a track technique. And our track technique is basically what the nose guard plays. It's a toe-to-toe -to -toe alignment, nose-to-nose, -nose, and by and large, he's basically, it's, a, it's called a track, and he's basically our two-gap guy. And of course, the only block he'd really be a two-gapper on is the drive block, okay? The second technique would be our shade, okay? In which case, our guy would be a crotch split on the offensive lineman. With his inside foot, all right? Splitting the crotch of the offensive lineman, protecting, in this case, the B gap, protecting the shade to his, his uh, the gap to his shade side. The third alignment or technique would be what we call a zip, in which our, our defensive lineman, like our defensive ends, is lined up toe to toe, the wide alignment. And of course, he's pushing for depth, pushing up the field. All right? So what it is, basically, our alignments tell him where to go. Our techniques tell him what to do when he gets there. OK, so by breaking it up this way, we're able to teach every lineman the same way. So once they know what they're doing, they're interchangeable parts. An end could go down and play nose. A nose could play end if the emergency ar arose, or if, uh, if a situation arose, where we'd need, you know, we'd need to, to reverse the roles of those guys. Basically, as far as personnel, what we're looking for, in the, in the, the obviously, just by the configuration of the, 
of the defense with the nose and the two ends, the best player, the most dominant player, has to be our nose guard. Without question, he's a guy that's got to be able to, to, to control the situation, to be able to control the run inside. He needs to draw two to block him somehow, either with the double team or the chip or some type of combination block. He needs, he needs to have two guys blocking him. He needs to use up two. And what it is is the primary block that, that he's going to see is either the, the full lead, okay, the full lead or the chip in which he'll start him front side and then he'll chip off to the near backer, to the, uh, to the Mike backer. We feel in order for a guy to play this, you know, he has to possess certain qualities. Obviously, he has to be strong. I'd like him in the range of about anywhere from 6'1 to 6'3. I'd like him to be able to play the ball sideline to sideline, and I'd like him to be as explosive. He's probably our most explosive football player. So you combine all those qualities, and, and albeit rare qualities, they, they would comprise to make up uh, what, uh, what we're looking for in the nose guard. The ends, on the other hand, are, are taller, slightly rangier guys, guys that, that uh, don't necessarily get in and, and play that uh, track alignment that often. They're guys that uh, are, are, are edge type players. They, I'd like them to be, like I said, taller. I'd like them to be able to, to run. I'd like pass, uh, pass rushing type guys out of them. I'd like uh, guys that are good athletes, uh, basketball players come to mind when I think of what our, what our ends look like. So those, that type, that composition of athletes are basically what we're looking for in our three down guys. Now, as far as key, progress, key, key progression goes, obviously the key progression for our, our, our nose guard doesn't extend beyond what we would call our triangle. We'll be beyond the, the triangle from the, if I drew a triangle there, from the two guards to the depth of the near back, that would be the depth of the back, a full back in a home position, okay? That would be the base, the triangle that he'd read his keys at him. The hard thing about playing nose guard like anything else, the closer you play the ball, the better athletes you better be. So the, the, the most the difficult thing that the nose guard has is the fact that he's got blocks coming at him at any time from all sides. All right, so he's keying, he's keying that, that triangle we drew between the guards with the guards in the, uh, the, the fullback in the home position. The end, on the other hand, his first key is always the guy he's lining up on. The second key for him would be what we call the run alley. So if he were to get a gap block, he'd squeeze off the gap block and look toward the run alley. If there was nothing coming there, his third key would be, again, the near back, the full back in the home position, or the near back if there was one. So that's the way, that's the way the end will key the football. Through the, through the first key, which is his primary key the guy's lined up on, to the run alley, Okay, for any guards or anything coming on a, on, a, uh, on a trap course, and then his eyes go to the near back, or the full back in the home position, and the near back threat. So there, there the, the, the run keys are our, our key progression for our three down guys. Now, as far as what it takes, what it takes to make a good football player, the foundation of any football player is his stance. Without, without these guys getting down in the, in the, in the, in the necessary stance, I, uh, I don't see how they could possibly execute the, the, the demands that, that we're going to place on them. All right? The way I explain the stance is simply this. And I've been, I've been drawing this guy for years. It's my stick man. All right? What I'm looking for in the stance, put a blockhead on him, put another leg. What I emphasize in the, in the stance is, is a couple of things. Number one is that we talk about the power angles in the, in the ankles, the knees, and the hip. And that is the large, emphasizing the large muscle groups of the body, being able to explode out of the, out of the, the lower extremities and, uh, 
and, and, and like I said, having good power angles here. We want everything coming over a flat back. So I, I try and get the, all the humps out of the back and get that back as flat as I can. The big thing that, that we emphasize, I said the two big things that we emphasize is that we're going to drive off both feet not as opposed to step. I've never seen anybody teach an alignment, whether offense or defense, to step and not elevate his pads. So we pride ourselves in being a pad under pad defense. We want to keep the pads down. As a result, we want to be able to drive off both feet. In order to do that, I don't let them take too big a stagger. I'd like nothing more than the toe to instep to toe to heel stagger. And, and so that, that basically covers, covers that, that first step, the first part of it. The second thing that I emphasize is I want to lead with the hands. I don't want the head or any part of the helmet to be the first point of contact for the defensive lineman. I'd like the hands to be the first point of contact, even if they precede the head by a mere quarter of an inch. I want the first thing on the mat. It's the, the, our down lineman's success is predicated on, on whether or not he gets his hands on the man, and, and this can only be done by, by leading with the hands and not the head. Having said this, we work on the stance every day, every day. There, there's not a day goes by that we don't work on the stance in some way, shape, or form. Now, no defense is complete without movement, without doing s some kind of movement. We, the, 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 the worst thing in the world is a defense that we can do is give the offensive line a stationary target. Rather, I'd like, you know, uh, moving targets are harder to hit, so what I'd like to do is just talk about a little bit about our slant and angle right now. Slant, and let me just get it up here on the board. Anytime that we go to the tight end, we're going to use the term slant. Okay, anytime we're going to go away from the tight end, we want to use the term angle. All right. Now what I'm going to tell you is what I'm going to try and get. I'm going to try and get both slant and angle from their original alignments, from the wide alignments. If I can't, we'll cheat them down. But basically, I don't want their slant alignment or their angle alignment being any different from their base alignment. So if this guy's a foot-on-foot -foot player, then he'll be a foot-on-foot -foot player when we, when we slant and angle. All right? So on the slant, coming to the tight end, this guy's going to line up, the, our left end's going to line up, in this case we're going right, all right, he's going to step with the inside foot, a lead step with the inside foot, his landmark now becomes the V of the neck of the offensive guard. He's going to be anywhere from 11 to 15 inches off the football, his mental weight is going to be on his back foot, on his, on his outside foot rather. We're going to cut the base down a little bit so that we guarantee we get that good six inch lead step. He essentially becomes, in this case, a B-gap player. If he were to get a back block by the guard, he'll nose it up, he'll try and work the guard back in the A-gap, but he'll stay front side on the block and he'll leverage the A-gap. The nose guard, depending on the size of the split, the size of the split between the guard and the center, will either run around and that is a flip the hip to get in the hole, a quick move, or he'll, we'll, he'll execute what we call an H move, where if the, gap is, if the gap is big, he'll run around. If the gap is smaller, he'll come back and H this guy, which is a lead step to the chin of the offensive guard, and he will prevent any type of displacement with the guard, tr with the guard coming down on him. All right? The end, essentially, if there's a tight end there, will do the same thing to the tight end. Again, I'll ask him to step. The inside foot will be up. The outside foot will be back. We'll always try and step with the stagger foot, which, is the, which, is, which, which would be the, the, the furthermost back of the two feet. Again, he does the same basic deal as the nose guard does. He steps to the tight end and looks to blunt any down block by the tight end if one were to happen, while at the same time he leverages the C-gap inside out. 
He doesn't look to cross the back block or the down block, but rather stay inside it, get frontal on it, and again, leverage the C gap. Okay, that would be our slant technique. Our angle would be going just the opposite way. All right, again, from that wide five, that foot to foot five alignment, we're going to cross face, we're going to be 11 to 15 inches off the ball. Our landmark is going to be the V of the neck of the offensive guard. Our, our, uh, our intention is to leverage the B gap. And so he's going to do basically the same thing that the left end did on slant. Nose guard is going to run around or H depending on the size of the gap, the width of the gap. The backside end with no tight end here, okay, will just take a quick step out to the line of scrimmage, not get any further up the field till he gets a feel for what's going on. Thank you for watching this tape on the West Virginia Odd Stack defense. I hope it helped.